Okay, welcome again to Reason and Truth Ministry. This week we're going to be delving into some questions and answers. But before we do, let's just open up in prayer. Okay? Before we do. Heavenly Father and King Him right now, we thank you for this time of intimacy. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you this time, Father, when we could come and peruse your word and delve into your word and father get to know you in the manner in which you are to be known father we thank you that this is the hour and the time and the season where your name is being made great throughout this world where your character your nature and your person has been made known to all mankind and we thank you this hour that truly we can come before you and we can bow we can barack before you uh, Elohim, uh, Yod He Wav He, Yeshua Mashiach, Yeruah Kodesh, we can bow before you and say, Thou art our God, the Ahad, the one who is and who will always be, the non cause, all cause of all things that which we are. And we thank you. Grace us with your presence, with your Shekinah, and let your Ruach Kodesh continue to. Open our minds that we will come to know you as you are to be known. In Yeshua Mashak name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, this evening we want to deal with some questions and answers. Alright, and also with how we are actually living now as just um, uh, like random explorers or, or just savage so to speak we we live in a culture now where where no nothing is absolute and everything is relative and where i just do what i feel and how i think that's okay and what happening now more than ever is that people are moving further and further away from what we call absolute or truth or certainty boundaries and boundaries are that lines of freedom because without boundaries there isn't any freedom freedom is to say this is as far as I will go this is as far as I choose to go freedom is not is not uh, pre preventing anyone from doing anything freedom is having the accessibility the right and the will to do anything you want to do that is freedom and this is why when Yahweh made Mankind, he made mankind not from himself, not ex dio. He didn't take any type of himself or any part of himself and make mankind or make any part of the universe. He made it out of nothing. He made it aborakadabora. I will create as I speak. That is what that word means. And we all know that word in any language. Abora, abora. Bara, bara means to create or means to bring things together, means to, 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 to make things into one place like a, like a summit. Kadabara, bara, kadabara, dabara, dabara, the word, debara. So now he is using his word to bring all things together and the word deba it means to bring things together into one place so now this week we want to look at Hosea and what is actually going on in this passage of scripture what is really what is really taking place in Hosea who is Hosea Hosea is a prophet to Israel, both Israel and Judah at that particular point in time in uh, when we had Israel doing all form of what? Foolishness, Foolishness or idolatry and, and, and anything that you could devise in your mind, they were doing. Doesn't that sound familiar today in today's society? Now, Yeshua said in this word, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. And he said, when you see these things approaching, know that that is a sign of the end. Now, in Jewish culture, in the Jewish calendar, when you look at the age of the earth, is approximately five. 
2,700 and something years. So it's nearly close to the sixth day. The sixth day, okay? And that sixth day speaks about where mankind was what? Made into a person because man was made on the sixth day. So now if man was made on the sixth day and we now approaching the sixth day, we're seeing that in their cal calendar, they're expecting who to come? Mashiach. Because Mashiach now from their premise, this is when he's coming. But however, when he's coming, again, he's coming as what? He's coming as judge. He's not coming as a savior. He's not coming as a redeemer. He is coming as judge and as king. Now, that is necessary for us to know so that how we live this life. So now, Israel, Judah, the great prostitute, and she is Goma, as the story is told in Hosea. Now, when you turn to Hosea chapter 11, when we look at Hosea chapter 11, from verse 1, when Israel was a child, I love him. Not her, but him. Out of Egypt, I called my son. The more they called them, the more they what? Departed from me. me. Now, who is calling? Yahweh is using the prophet to call who? Israel and Judah back to himself. They kept sacrifice to Baal. And burn offerings to idols. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk. So now, the, while he called, what did they do? They kept going back to what they? No. no. That which they brought out of Egypt. That which they were accustomed to. Look at the churches in our culture today. What they do? They go to church on a Sunday. They practice their ritual. They sing their hymns. They pray homage to man. They worship and with all their phylacteries, with all their pontifications, and all that which is demonstrated is not towards Hashem, but towards mankind. They dress with their finest linen. They look so sharp. They, they, their cuffs with all their different accessories. All pleasing to man. He said in Jeremiah, you, you come to my house and you offer your burnt sacrifices. But your heart is nowhere close to me. I need not your burnt sacrifices. So now, what are we to take out of these words that the prophet is actually speaking to us? So now, Hosea, now he's talking to Israel, but very, very radical. As a husband will so long for her wife, for his wife. A husband who is, who is angry because she has played the harlot she have gone unto other men now look at something the second commandment is thou shall have no other god before me thou shall make no image of god before me thou shall not think of any other god beside me thou shall not make any image in thy mind of any god beside me for i am the lord thy god a jealous God, he's a jealous God. So now, the seventh commandment said, thou shall not commit a adultery. So now, when you take the two commandments and you kiss it together, the second correspond with the seven. So then there is a principle therein on those two, in those, in that in those two commandments, there's one principle. So now, the Ten Commandments, you have five principles. But let's just, just take a, a, an extraction from that one. What's the principle there? What's, what's that relationship that is actually speaking about there? What's that relationship? Now, look at something. Thou shalt not make any image of God, and thou shalt not commit adultery. Idolatry and 
adultery. Meaning, what he's literally saying is that you can get anything you want from a woman. Anything you want from a man. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Because when you commit an adultery, what you're doing? You are just exchanging parts. You are exchanging parts. And when you exchange part, it has no what? No meaning. Because you're not looking at the source, you're just looking at the, the effects of what is coming from that source. Is this woman different from that woman? Is that woman different from this woman? Who is this woman? And why are you receiving what you're receiving from this woman or from that man? What's the point? Because if I can just exchange body part, then I am not obligated to my bride or my husband. It's the same way now. When people look at creation, we look at the moon, the stars, the, 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 the water, the water gives us food, fishes and what have you. The sun gives us photosynthesis and all the energies that are necessary to bring forth, produce from the earth. The animals eat the plants and they process it. We now take it in and we get what? The nutrients from all these things. So now the sun and the moon and all these things are what actually providing and feeding the sources, the end product, which is what we eat. However, that doesn't mean that the sun ought to be worshipped. But what the sun is doing is a good thing. I, there's a good thing. There's some, there is something that the sun is giving that I could receive. So now, what the sun is giving that I could receive is valuable. But that doesn't mean that I must worship the sun. What I could get from a woman is valuable.